Welcome to another episode of Project Grown Up. This is a bi-weekly podcast about conquering the phenomenon known as adulthood through hard work, discussion, and of course, a lot of laughs. If you like this show, do us a favor and leave us a five-star review, like, and subscribe. I'm Danielle, here with my co-host, Amy. Hey, girl, hey. And Alex. Hello, hello. So this week, we just wanted to check in with one another and have a relaxed, no-pressure type of episode. There's a lot of serious things going on in the world right now, from the Delta variant of COVID to Afghanistan. So this week, we want you to relax with us as we discuss some of the lighter trending topics. So, Alex, I hear uh, you have something on the top of your mind that you want to get started with. That's right. I just got my third COVID shot, y'all. And so far, I'm not sick like I was when I got the second shot. That was terrible. But yeah, pretty, pretty happy about it. Um, I'm immune compromised or immunocompromised. um, So I went and got it. But honestly, if you wanted to get that third shot, you could just walk up in there and say you're getting your first shot. They're not checking. So, you know, people want to if people want to get it, go get it. I'm supporting that. Um, I mean, (laughs) what do they not even check your vaccine card in Florida? Well, I mean, you can just walk in and say it's your first shot. Then you wouldn't have a vaccine card. Oh. I feel like that is, like, really bad advice. Like, that's like going trick-or-treating, and it says take one, and you grab, like, a handful. That's not yeah. fair for the and other And then you kids. feel sick afterwards and end up throwing up all the candy. Yeah. yeah what if I tell I, her, I mean, what Although if she, she got the last it, vaccine, but... and somebody hasn't even gotten their first one yet? I mean, I guess that's probably on them. But you never know. But that. Oh, my like, thing no. is... People have had enough time to get their first (laughs) shot. So, I mean, if people aren't lining up to get those shots and people want a third, hand them out to those people. But speaking of trends and um, the Delta variant and whatnot, masks are coming back in style, y'all, particularly black masks. They are trending in the fashion world right now. So hashtag mask up with those black masks. I wonder why that is, because I feel like I've seen those since the start of the pandemic and I didn't even know the black ones existed because they're way better than the ugly blue ones <laughs> the blue ones look like you belong in the hospital like you you are coming out of there you know I guess the black one is kind of like chic honestly I have a couple of cute little black ones um some of them are just black some of them have little designs Claude mom actually made me one that was black and then she like um sewed or embroidered I guess like a sunflower on it that was super cute and then I have a black one for work too that just has like our company name across the front the black ones are nice I have a black one that I got in a secret Santa last year it has little wine glasses filled with wine and a Santa hat on one of them it's so cute that's cute very seasonal so anyways uh other trending things we're gonna get started with videos I have seen this blow up probably ever since I got back from Chicago this which was like two days ago (laughs) actually I think it was like the day I went I was like what because Dave's like what's this milk crate thing that everybody keeps doing and I'm like I don't know what you're talking about and then I see a video of it on Twitter and I'm like or on TikTok and I'm like what the hell is this it seems kind of like a stupid trend because I guess like a bunch of grocery stores or at least one that I saw um, was like they had a section missing of milk crates. This was just like a random post I saw online. So obviously it needs to be checked. But if that's the case, it's really dumb. Well, so explain what the trend is exactly what you see on the video for um, the listeners that haven't seen it yet. So at least what I'm getting from the video is that like you put a crate down and then you do like two more after and then like three more after. So essentially you're like you're making stairs with crates, except like a pyramid out because it's not sturdy. So what are they doing? They're just like climbing to the top and then they fall and like, no, they don't even neck. make it to the top. Like there's this one of this guy trying to do it and he like wipes out after like the third step. Like he just completely, but it looks so painful. Yeah, I saw some videos of like enormous bruises and like apparently doctors are coming out saying, you know, you're going to break your neck and die. So don't do it. Apparently, TikTok removed these videos and even made a statement of, you know, advising people not to do this. Um, But we've seen some other 
you know, quote unquote challenges like this before like in the, the past. Tide Pod challenge. Oh my All gosh. sorts of crazy stuff that's definitely not good for you. Um, yeah. And I'm not, it, I guess, I don't know. Is it entertaining to watch? I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why people are making them. That one, like, people put their hand on the stove to see how long they could last. That's so dumb. Right? I, wow. I will say. One there was. I will I say when I was uh, younger. Don't when I was, like, do that, please, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, please do not do that. Um. I will say when I was younger, I convinced my brother to do the cinnamon challenge. And it was like when we were that in high school or whatever. on YouTube, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, it was it was funny because he was like four years older than me. So I was a freshman. He was like a senior in high school. He thought he was super cool. So he's like, wow, this is dumb. And I got a video and it was like my first video ever uploaded to Facebook because Facebook was on and popping. Um, but it was just, it was a mess. And then ever since then, trends have just blown up. But I feel like with social media getting more and more like convenient and a younger gener, like younger and younger crowds being drawn to it, I feel like trends are coming and going faster than ever. But also there are so many, I feel like I can't keep up with them or maybe I'm just old. I feel like I'm just old. <laughs> I'm not really paying attention to much, uh, when it comes to tr- social media challenges. I will also add, though, that I am pretty obsessed with TikTok. I get in pretty deep. Yeah. Uh, hours and hours. It's like to the point where I watch it every night before I go to bed now. <laughs> I feel like I was getting so gypped because I was watching the Instagram reels because I have one friend that never wanted to open the TikToks, and I mostly only sent them to her. So instead, I would just send Instagram reels. But then I just recently, a couple weeks ago, went back to TikTok and realized how much I've really been missing out on because there's so much more variety on TikTok. So I watch, the only thing I watch on Instagram these days, uh, as far as the videos go, Amy, are somebody like decorating their apartment or whatever it is, but especially food videos. Like I cannot, like if you just go in the the trending actually section, it is all just food. That's it. I love food. I do too. Like there's just so much different to watch. And I've, I've only made like one thing I've ever watched but honestly i just i keep saving them so basically all the stuff i saved on instagram is food (laughs) i feel like that's probably alex's pinterest (laughs) yeah so speaking of trending food i saw that starbucks introduced this new apple crisp macchiato which critics are claiming it's better than the pumpkin spice latte so i did go and try it out this morning to see what all the hype was about and see if it actually is better than the pumpkin spice latte it was pretty good it was pretty good i don't know if personally i would say it's better than pumpkin spice i don't want to say i'm a basic you know pumpkin spice gal but who doesn't like pumpkin spice i mean you're crazy if you don't right oh my gosh no this this morning first of all it's a little too early for pumpkin spice like it's the humidity is crazy it's still august like we can start doing pumpkin spice at like the last week of september I think that's okay. But this does not mean I don't like it. Don't shake your head at me, Alex. Like pumpkin I just spice like, all year. <laughs> I still like pumpkin spice lattes from Starbucks. However, I do not like that every single place in the fall starts to make everything pumpkin spice because certain things should just not be that way. You know what's really good that is pumpkin spice? The um what's the name of that creamer that you can put in coffee? What's the like one they sell in the grocery store? The main Coffee Mate. Coffee Mate has a really good pumpkin spice uh, limited edition creamer. I used it in my coffee this morning. That was pretty good. However, there's just certain things that should not be pumpkin spice, like pumpkin spice popcorn, pumpkin spice. Oh, gross. I don't know, like the most random stuff. You're going to see so much of it in the grocery store, but it's like this. This should not be pumpkin spice. Like pumpkin but if spice it's, Oreos probably aren't good either. I don't know. If I don't know, but I kind of want to try it. Like pumpkin spice potato chips. Like that sounds gross, but I feel Ew. like I need to try no. it. Girl, you won't even eat pickled pizza. So don't even come out. With pumpkin gross. spice. You know, no, 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 no. What about you, Amy? I am already over the whole pumpkin spice thing. No, I'm just kidding. I don't really care. I think it's funny, but I do think it's way too early. It is almost September, I guess, but to me, I feel like it just became August, and my friend Kara will not stop sending me all these little memes and GIFs, and 
just little things excited about her pumpkin spice and all the fall happenings and sweater weather. But we like I live in Florida now, so I don't really get <laughs> it down here. Like that doesn't north, happen till like sense. December. <laughs> yeah, I'm like up north, it makes sense. The leaves start to change and everything, and you Not get a yeah, it's, it's fire, so but... humid today. I had to take a second shower when I got home. Yeah, I don't know. It's too early. No, it's way too early. I will get a pumpkin spice latte if someone were to get it for me. <laughs> but other than that, I probably will wait until October to actually get one. Or like I said, maybe like when it starts to change, the weather starts to get slightly cooler at like the end of September. Honestly, that's something though, that's kind of random. We can move on after. But that's something to really think about because it says a lot about our economy, I think. People are obsessed with the pumpkin spice latte, but if Starbucks had it year round, it would not be nearly as popular because people will get tired of it so quick. It's only so popular because it's like limited. People are just mm. obsessed with limited things, I think. Mm. I don't know even, about that. I don't I see, don't know. McDonald's this is why I disagree. With so Starbucks has a blonde coffee choice and it's really good. Like I get a blonde vanilla latte. And it's really, I mean, aside from the fact that it's, you know, Starbucks is, like, running out of all this stuff. Like, you can't get, like, hazelnut syrup anywhere. Like, if you wanted the hazelnut, like, if you wanted a hazelnut latte or something or a hazelnut coffee, like, you couldn't get that because every place I try to go to, they're out of that. They're out of the blonde uh, coffee kind. You know, like, how they have, like, Pike's Place and all those different ones. I like the blonde. It's really good. And I can't, I can't get it anywhere, but that is always super popular because even during a normal time, they, if you get it like too late in the day, they're already, they already ran out. So that's so funny because that same friend, one day we went to go buy like, um, stuff for like ice cream sundaes. I work with her as well. We went to go buy ice cream sundaes for our team meeting and we had to get some caramel And she was talking about how all the ladies around the office apparently are always looking for extra caramel or caramel for their coffees or whatever. And she's like, I think I'm just going to start buying some and just selling it on the side. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Like, is there like a shortage that I don't know about? But I'm like, honestly, there were so many weird shortages. I would not be surprised. So, y'all, I saw that Taco Bell has a new chicken sandwich. I don't even eat Taco Bell because I don't want to be on the toilet all night. So... (laughs) Thanks for the <laughs> insight, Danya. to me. <laughs> click, click on it. Click on the picture and see see if you think that looks good. All right, give me just a second. It kind of looks good. It kind of looks like um. It looks a ba- like a deconstructed um Chick Fil A sandwich. It's got jalapenos and some Look, sauce on it. Next line of this article: Lest any of you need a reminder, the fast food chicken sandwich wars are far from over. The best one is uh. Chick fil A, like you can't even. I don't know. I feel like I gotta try this now. It looks kind of good, but like chicken from Taco Bell, uh, I don't mm. know. Oh, speaking of trending stuff, did you guys see that? Um, That's Italian no for me. style so... deli meats are currently oh. some of them in the Midwest. Uh, had a salmonella outbreak. <gasps> oh no, my first thought when I saw Gross. that today was, Oh my gosh, so many charcuterie boards won't happen. <laughs> Oh no, the best in the Midwest because like those are so popular. I'm not gonna lie, I've never made one, but I really want to make one one day when I move in together, like as a housewarming party. I make them all the time. They're well, Claudia and my friend Stephanie taught me how to make them. They make them so much better, but they're so good. I is love there, meats and cheeses. Is there like a a method to it, Amy? Because I thought it was literally nope. just buy like whatever meat and cheese yeah. you. It's yeah, just you just get cheese. whatever. Yeah, you just get some meat and cheese. I we usually get at least one or two that we know we like, and then one or two that we've never tried before in terms oh. of the cheese. The meats usually you'll get some like prosciutto, some salami, some pepperoni, um, maybe some other sort of little like ham or like thinly sliced meat. There's another meat that I just can't think of what it's you called. You guys get like any grapes or anything? Yeah, we usually do grapes, and then we do olives, and then we'll do a brie cheese, and you just like cook that part. Um, and then we'll do crackers so you can put the mm-hmm. cheese on the crackers and then we'll do like a little Stephanie does like a little apricot jam. So you do Ooh. like the apricot jam on the cracker with the Ooh, brie you guys should do a little and then a little piece uh, of meat. Oh, too. So 
bruschetta. Oh, well, now you're starting a whole a whole tasting menu. Yeah. But now I really want. Now I really see. I, I, I need so quite badly want to make a charcuterie board because they're just so aesthetically pleasing and they taste amazing. That's like what I eat for dinner all the time. Just some meat and cheese and crackers. <laughs> <laughs> no grapes. It's a, it's a okay. deconstructed lunchable. I have to tell you guys what I'm obsessed with. I'm showing them right Ew, now with Amy, the camera. That's so gross. Listen. This is so gross. <laughs> that is this nasty. new cereal that I've discovered, Marshmallow Fruity Pebbles. So it's literally a box of Fruity Pebbles with a couple of the Lucky Charms marshmallows thrown in there. Um, All sugar, all delicious. Yum, delicious. I wish that my inner child could have this cereal. Like, I wish I was five again eating this, but as an adult... Whatever. The guilt is there, but it tastes just as good. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Fruity Pebble marshmallows. Honestly, I don't think I've ever had Fruity Pebbles. The scandal. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was just talking about this at work with a couple people today. Like, what is your favorite cereal? Mine is, I mean, my top five are definitely Honey Nut your Cheerios. top five? Right Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like Honey Nut Cheerios is my go-to. I like that one probably the most. Like, that's even a good dessert. Does anybody ever eat cereal for dessert? Oh, I haven't had. We've discussed. I haven't this. had a honey puffs. Oh, no wait, these are my honey puffs. Honey smackers. No, honey smackers are the ones from when we were kids. Right? Yeah, I got, the, I got the generic brand. No, I have honey. No, combs. there's they're honey smackers. Those too, but no, there's honey smackers too. It had like the frog they, on the box, and wasn't it they green? Make my pee smell funny. Ew. They always have since I was a kid, but they're what? the most delicious cereal. What? I've I never heard that, Amy. I think maybe you should get that checked out. No, no, no. I've Googled it. It happens to other people. Just like how asparagus does to some people. That cereal I, does. Doesn't that happen to everybody? I don't think so. I know. Honestly, that cereal, <laughs> it's terrible, but it's a good representation of where I'm at right now, kind of. I've been doing great at work, as I mentioned last week or whenever we did an episode, but I still have not grocery shopped. Um... Uh, it's kind of hard to balance, guys. It's you live, like, balance. right by the grocery store, like, a block well, I live away. I by Publix. That's the expensive grocery store. <laughs> so I'm not going there. I need to trek across town and go to Aldi and do a full shop. But I just don't have the energy or motivation. But I have been trying to save instead of eating out. I've just been having lunch. And then instead of eating dinner or going out to dinner, me and Alex have a new trend. It's food-related, actually. We've been going to these kava bars, and I'm obsessed with them. What is that? Because I'm trying to look it up and I'm just like, I don't know what this is. Alex, you know how to explain it or should I give it a go? You can give it a go since you're so hyped about it. Mm -hmm. I'm really hyped about it. So picture this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, It's like a bar atmosphere. So when you go in, there's like a bartender. It's a bar setup, but they also have like lounging areas and tables and everything. Uh, either music playing like a bar or live music. And then you can get, they have teas, coffees, kombucha. They have a lot of different kombuchas, some on tap, which I didn't know was a thing. And then like bottled and cans ones as well. And then their specialties are the kava shots or the kava drinks, I guess, which kava is like a plant um, that they grind up into a powder and make a tea out of it. So it's like a so natural. Like matcha? No, I don't think so. I don't really know what matcha does, but the kava has re like relaxing properties in it. it has like sed sedative properties similar to that, I it's guess. Kind of like anti-anxiety. It's um, it's from like the Pacific Islands. Like they have it also in like Hawaii. It's traditionally used for like a ceremony purposes. Um, but you know, I guess we uh. We stole it and <laughs> we're drinking it as like we do now people. over here. But you know, we're not um it's we're not doing the ceremony and you know, the kind of stuff. So it's not I don't I think it's I definitely thought when I saw this, on this outline you that you guys meant like like a cliff bar. No. <laughs> like I a know. type of bar no. you eat. I know I, I so when I started when I Googled it, I was like, What? So it's how really do you nice. find out about these kava bars? So, so <laughs> yeah, I I found one um, down here in St. Pete, and apparently St. Petersburg is like the capital for kava bars in the U.S. There's just so many of them, and they're kind of these hidden gems. And think about it kind of like you're going to 
um, a tea or a coffee shop, but they're open till like two or 3 a.m. So it's a really nice kind of like sober atmosphere. Like you don't have to worry about drinking too much or getting out of hand. You just kind of chill and like everyone's real friendly and chatty and they've got all sorts of events like bingo and comedy and all this other stuff going on. So it's just a really good time, very chill environment. Um, but yeah, I, I took Amy to one and, you know, she's been a fan ever since. So uh, yeah, Alex had discovered it and apparently she had told me about it a couple of weeks ago, but apparently I wasn't paying attention because um, I did not remember. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> right. I, I am known to be not the best listener. Anyway, it's something I'm working confusing. on. But I had, I was talking to her about how I was trying to do like a little cleanse from alcohol, save some money, be more productive. How's that going? It's actually going really well. I'm almost like a month in, honestly. And I've saved a lot of money already, but I've spent it in other places. <laughs> but still, you um, but I, actually like it. I feel better already. And I've already lost a little bit of weight, too. But after I told her about it, I was like, well, I still want to go out and do stuff, though. And she's like, well, we can go to this place. And then we went there. And now I'm just so into it. The vibe is really good. It's like a, a young crowd. I would say very liberal. Um, I will say the kava shots themselves actually taste kind of like dirt. So it's not very appealing. <laughs> um to the taste buds it's not that bad <laughs> it's not that bad though and they have the kombucha on tap so you take the little shot of the kava and then you chase it with your kombucha and it you basically just tastes just as bad as alcohol yes, no it doesn't it tastes it doesn't taste better than as alcohol. bad okay it's yeah. better than alcohol. yeah no because i could um, not take a vodka shot like no. a green juice but not as sweet yeah like a green juice it's a little bit bitter okay do you guys um typically drink kombucha like have yeah. you yeah what kind what brand do you do um well i don't really know but it's the exact same kind of bottle every single time is it's it like, like that brown like yep. that big brown bottle yep. and they got like tropical punch <laughs> they have a watermelon one that's really good yeah i uh, you yeah, know had the they water- have a watermelon one. one i saw it at target one time and uh both i tried it then i was like dave you want to try it and he's like yeah sure best one i've ha- ever had for sure but i can't find I, it now i like the pomegranate one a lot and then i like um the grapefruit one ruby grapefruit weirdly enough kombucha and sparkling water i love grapefruit but anything else including natural i do not like grapefruit whatsoever it's so terrible labat blue is the beer company that's from, it's from Canada, but they have a location here in Buffalo because we're so close to Canada. And they have a, so they have a Labatt Blue Light Grapefruit. And surprisingly, it's actually pretty good. It's like actually, it's like very refreshing if it's a hot summer day like we've been having this week. So maybe sometime when you guys come visit, I'll, uh, I'll have you try it. I'll have you try mine first so that way you don't end up getting something that you... Uh, aren't gonna like <laughs> i appreciate that speaking of hot summer though um <laughs> made me think of hot girl summer so any music any turning music stuff going on that i don't know about i've been kind of out of the loop i'm working remote again so i haven't been driving uh-huh. as much not hearing the radio so i don't know what's what's going on i know i mean i've been tr- i've been working out in like studios since i don't know gyms opened back up so I haven't really heard too much new music because it's usually when I listen to it by myself, I do. But I did see today that Kanye West wants to change his name, his legal name, to Ye, which doesn't even surprise me (laughs) at this point. This man just cannot surprise anybody anymore. Honestly, let him. People change their names to crazy stuff all the time, and that's not that crazy. Like, I would not be surprised if it was more something like The God or well, something like, like that. Well, like, but... why bother going through that process when that's what nicknames are for? You know what I mean? I mean, he can do whatever he wants, but, like, that'd be like saying, oh, I'm going to change my name to Danny, my legal name to Danny. It's like, but people can call you that anyway. Like, it's not... He already goes by ye all the time or yay i think it's maybe maybe he has like a really like negative connotation with the con part maybe he's like con (laughs) connotation connectivity we're not connected anymore gotta cut the con 
Didn't Snoop go from Snoop Dogg to Snoop Lion legally? Yeah, then he changed it back. So yeah, they... I was, I was going to say, like, would you regret changing your name? And then maybe he's going to miss Kanye. Like, he built a whole brand on that. Yeah, he did. Funnily enough, maybe this is TMI, what have you. I don't know. I don't care. People always tell me I overshare, but it is what it is. But my, um, speaking of names, though, my mom actually took my stepdad's last name when they got married, like, 15 years ago, 20, no, 10 years ago, maybe. And then they split up and were apart for like five years. But now they're back together and they're getting remarried. But luckily, she kept his last name all of those years. So she doesn't have to change it back. She still has it. So I'm like, well, that's convenient. Wow. <laughs> that makes it easy. Amy, how does that happen? Known. I don't know. I guess if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Wow. So they just didn't talk to each other for five years ran into each other so wait so how long were they actually married the first time oh i don't know i'm not that good at details <laughs> <laughs> yeah well but speaking we, of kanye we west like let's move on to um another big name scarlett johansson oh. i did hear about this she's suing disney because she basically is saying that um they didn't pay her the money that she was owed i didn't hear about this what's happening with scarlett so basically, she's claiming she filed a lawsuit against Disney for the new movie she was in, uh, Black Widow, saying, okay. um, claiming that her contract was breached because they released uh, the movie, the movie Black Widow, on Disney Plus as the same time as of the theater release. So basically, um, in her contract, she was promised to have X amount of money from the box office sales. But because people are watching at home on Disney Plus, she's not getting that box office sales. And it's oh. projected that that would have been $50 million from the box wow. office to her. Did so you guys see that movie? No. no, but I want to. It was very good. My mom's obsessed. It was so, so good. Like, it was so nice to finally learn her story. I don't know if you guys have seen the other Marvel movies, but I've always just wondered, what the hell is this girl's story? And it was such a good movie. So did you watch it on Disney Plus or in the theaters, Daniel? <laughs> no, I, I no, I didn't go see it in the theaters. Okay, Somebody good. has a Regal membership, so uh, oh, we get discounts, wow. and it's really nice. Um, I mean, wow. So now that's interesting. I guess I would have to know the details before I could really comment, because that is huge. I feel like I'd really... want to see the contract before I like can make yeah, it. Yeah, I would want to see the contract but, as well and know exactly how much she lost out on. Not seeing this contract, I'm like, she's a really good actress. Just if she was pro if if it was true that she was promised as much, and then I could see where that becomes an issue. You know, I feel like she is a a lister for sure. So <laughs> she has enough money that I don't think that she would be suing them if she didn't need to. Like, if it was, if she weren't in the right. So, maybe, I don't know. Without seeing the contract and without reading the article, if I had to choose who I would believe, I would probably believe Scarlett Johansson. She seems like a reliable person, like a honest stand-up citizen. I don't know. I think it brings, like, this bigger kind of issue to light. Disney is releasing a lot of movies right to Disney Plus instead Straight, of to the yep. theaters like they normally mm -hmm. would. So, are actors and actresses getting shorted here? So I think, um, especially for this lawsuit in particular, maybe she can get some, you know, backup actors on her side, maybe that have also lost out on some some dough. You know what I'm thinking? Well, though, and everybody's contract is different. Remember that? Yeah, but I think it's pretty normal for them to get box office um, sales. A certain well, yeah, I would think so, yeah. You guys definitely oh. need to watch it, though. You will love her sister in the movie. Like, love her. Amy, you... I think you're going to have a crush on her. Okay, hold on before I forget again. Do you know what I was thinking, though, Alex? Um, you said, are the actors and actresses getting gypped because Disney and other platforms are going straight to, like, streaming some movies instead of going to the theater release and then streaming, you know, maybe a month or a couple months after. But... Rather than looking at it as like our A-list celebrities getting gypped on certain deals, 
isn't it also opening up an opportunity for other actors and actresses to take those roles? Because if we start doing more movies, more shows and stuff direct to streaming instead of, you know, theaters and live TV and then streaming, then that's a lot more material, a lot more content, which means we need more actors and actresses from all different areas and walks of life. So I think that kind of opens up more opportunities. Rather than just keeping it with just the A-listers, you know, just the Hollywood stars get the big roles. Honestly, yes. I don't I don't really get that too much. But then again, that could have been because I thought of this other idea. So, obviously, if something is hitting Disney+, Plus and it's also in the theaters at the same time, right now, I think that primarily started because of COVID. Like, people weren't comfortable with going out. The movie industry has been hit super hard. However... I don't think it's the actors and actresses who are going to get the biggest consequence from this. I think it's the movie theaters because a lot of movie theaters only make money off of the concessions, really. They don't make money off the movie. And uh, there's like there's drive-in movie theaters, but, you know, some of those are probably not around as often anymore, especially during COVID. I mean, I don't know particularly, but I did interview a guy who was a drive-in and he was hit really hard. So we had to like have weddings and stuff. And like, he'd host like, um, not a tailgate, but like a viewing party for the football game just to make some money. For so a drive-in? I, yeah. For a drive-in movie theater. I'm actually surprised because I was going to the drive-in movie during COVID because that's one place I felt safe and that I could get out because I'm just sitting in my car. Yeah, well, I mean... I guess not in the winter, though. I feel. I don't like know. It's just... More. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, you guys live in Florida, so it's a little bit different, you know? This, we only get three months out of the year. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be the movie theaters who are hit harder because, though I do believe that most people would want to go to a movie theater like I still want to go to a movie theater if it's if something's brand new and I really want to see it like it's a you're paying for the experience as well you know like you can't get movie theater style popcorn at your own home honestly (laughs) the last I'm sorry the last thing I do want to say on it is that I feel like it is going to make it easier for um, certain companies to grow their monopolies I guess I don't know if I'm saying that properly but there are certain networks who already own almost everything, <clears throat> Disney being one of them. Um, and so if we start, you know, the more and more we start going straight to streaming, the less movies and theaters, the less live TV coming out on cable. Um, they, I'm sure they actually already own their own cable company. I don't know who it would be, but I, they probably own one already. But it's, then um, we're going to have Well, I mean, they own options. ABC. Yeah, so I mean, I feel like the really monopoly is just going to happen... Like... I feel like it's going to happen faster and faster. I don't know. And all this, eventually it'll be one company that owns everything. These streaming services, I think a lot is going to change within the next couple of years. Well, I wanted to say that um, Dexter, I don't know if any of you were a fan of Dexter, but after almost 10 10 years, um, they're coming out with a new and final season of Dexter this fall. So I'm super hyped about that. Definitely one of my favorite uh, TV shows of all time. I'm a big uh, kind of um, dark comedy <laughs> horror fan. I don't know what you want to call Dexter. She's into that weird stuff. It's, it's dark. I mean, I had to stop watching it just because I was yeah. like, I got to watch it with somebody because this is a serial killer show. <laughs> yeah, but like he's killing bad people, guys. It's fine. I know, but then he has that one guy like in the first season who like puts this little doll in his freezer and he's like... His, his, Somebody basically his brother is dating his sister. Oh yeah, don't give me any spoilers because that is like the <laughs> last thing I figured out. I finished like season one and that was pretty much it because I also was scared. I'm it's still scared. scared. <laughs> oh, I'm also super scared of Supernatural. Also, oh God, so speaking scary. of, okay, this is a trending episode. Dexter is coming back. They had that Friends reunion, which was actually very good. But like, it seems like they're trying to revive old shows. Oh, they are. But there's a reason that those shows were good then. And like we were nostalgic about them. But if you bring it back, it doesn't always do that well because it's just not the same. It's it's not, everything can't stay the same. Sequels the time has gone on. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, Ooh. I don't know how, uh, what is, not Golden Girls. What is, um, one of them that was done very well. 
was Gilmore Girls. Is that what you Gilmore were going to say? Gilmore Girls. That's what I was going to say. I think they did it very I well. Heard, I heard it wasn't as good when it came back. Uh, well, no, because okay, it was let's... short. But Full was... House, the original, was super, super cheesy. We all know that, well, but yeah, it was we good. Caught. The new one came out, and I was like, this is really stupid. It was just <laughs> as cheesy, but we're not five anymore. No, That's it was terrible. The other ones were way better, because it was from the 90s. I don't know. If I go back and watch the regular Full House now as an adult, I'm like, wow, this is what I was really into. I like, know. I, so into this. I know, right? But honestly, I just feel like it, I don't know. I don't know. I like the revamp shows. I really liked the Gilmore Girls ones. Um, I will say They're Parks and Rec kind of did one. It wasn't really like a revamp, but they just did like one episode during like election season. And it was kind of like a virtual everybody from the show kind of came together and was like basically go vote and also stay safe from COVID, which was really touching. I cried the whole like 30 minute episode. But I love those because especially if you're so obsessed, like for me with Gilmore Girls, once I watched it, like that one episode, I died. I'm like, oh my gosh, like Rory, Lorelai, they're back. They're just how I remember them. Like, oh, you get, I get really, really into my stuff. I want a renewal of Gossip Girl, but with the actual crew from the original. Yeah, have you seen the new one? I don't really no, like that I'm not going to watch that. That's lame. I'm not even going to try. It's It's <laughs> the same... It's the same thing in every episode. It's about two sisters. Um, they're they're half sisters, and their mom died a long time ago uh, when she gave birth to the second sister. So the first one, her I can't. Remember I don't think we name. need to go into all of this, honestly. Actually, okay, but the one is from Buffalo, and the other is in New York City, and the oh, one okay. from Buffalo moves to New York City, and that's how the story starts. But basically, yeah. in every single episode, it's about how. The two of them are getting along just fine. And then something happens and then they hate each other. And then they're fine by the end of the episode. And it's like, I know there has to be a conflict in each one, but it's the same. It it feels like the same episode just keeps repeating itself. And I don't know. I just, it's not as good as the original. I'll leave it at that. Um, So speaking of, you know, sequels never being as good as the original, this I am going to put a little disclaimer out there. If you are listening to this with children, just go ahead and skip like the next two and a half to three to four minutes or so. Nothing too bad, but still sequels. I'm seeing all of these girls that I know putting up on their um, social medias that they're looking for a sequel to OnlyFans because I guess OnlyFans is going to ban um, their main content, which are nude photographs and media content so my first question is what are they going to have on there if that's not what they have because i didn't know that they had anything else i think it's supposed to be like you're it's an easier way for like for example for like actresses and actors to connect one-on-one with their fans but people pay for it essentially oh like a meet and greet kind of yeah i remember watching a documentary on it and it was it was very interesting because what's oh, her name? Oh, I would love a documentary. Uh, the the uh, she worked with Zendaya in that one Disney show, The what? Redhead. Do you remember her name? What redhead? I can't think of her name. Well, that sucks because from the Disney Channel. Yeah, my point is not going to make any sense. Yeah, I only know one redhead, and that was Chelsea from That's So Raven. Oh, what a throwback! No, not that one. <laughs> uh, Bella Thorne. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thorne, yeah, she like I guess made an account, but she she made like a million dollars in one day, and I guess it wow. was making um other OnlyFans people who you know make their living off of there. It was making them mad because they're like you know they have to work so hard, and it's like she gets on there and you know she's this big name and instantly makes millions and millions of dollars. But you should just watch it; it's interesting. But um. Yeah, I saw they were going to do that, too. But I just saw the news article. I didn't... <laughs> I don't know anybody that has an OnlyFans, so... Honestly, I'm surprised at how many people... Well, I guess I'm not surprised. <laughs> well, well tell what OnlyFans is for, you know, the listeners that might not know. Oh. Um, well, if just you don't know... It's a basic description. If you don't know, OnlyFans is a trending uh, website. I don't think they have an app. It's just a website where girls can basically, it's basically like a Snapchat, but with a marketplace. So it's usually... Men too, it's not just Yeah, men too. So men and women and couples and 
everything in between, all genders, can take different kinds of photographs, clothes on or off, doing different kinds of things, whether you're like baking something maybe, and it's like a baking tutorial video. Maybe they have those. I'm not sure. Um, or not, every, not everything is pornographic. But not lots every, of it is. That's what it's currently known majority. for. Yeah. That's what it's been trending for for the past, you know, year or so. Um, but I girls are making a lot of money. First, when I, I know I a lot of people making money. I've heard of it, and it was like, it was it was in just so many rap songs. I'm like, I don't even know what this is. And then I think somebody had to explain it to me, and I was like, oh. I mean, so. honestly, it's just a it's just a more um, it's efficient because prior to that, people were doing the exact same thing on Snapchat. They're just, or Instagram as well, selling the same kind of like images and material, but just doing it through like Cash App or PayPal and stuff like that. OnlyFans was just a marketplace specifically for that. That's what people used it for. But Mm -hmm. they have made the move. I'm not sure which Karen called who, but they're deciding to get rid of the porn, get rid of the nudes. So OnlyFans OnlyFans is going to go down. And people are trying to figure out what's going to be the next OnlyFans. It reminds me of when Tumblr got rid of porn. I doubt either of you were ever into Tumblr. Um, but it I was... never, no, I never had Tumblr. But I know what I know what it is because I I know somebody that had a Tumblr. Not when it was, well, not when there was porn, but after. Oh. Yeah. Well, back it in the was, day, it I, looked more to me like a Pinterest. Where you it just, is like, like Pinterest. Post random things. Yes. So I got I got Tumblr when I was like fourteen. Um, the same time when Twitter had like was basically first coming out. Tumblr is basically like Pinterest. So you have you just follow people that have posts that you like, whether it's you know like song lyrics or pictures of like beautiful scenery or a video of someone doing a cool bicycle trick or a whole link to a novel it could be anything that you like you can like stuff you can comment on stuff and you can basically repost stuff but they also had porn on there and that just came out of nowhere so you'd be like oh gotta scroll through my tumblr really fast and hurry up and put my phone down because you're like it's two o'clock in mid-afternoon at school but when they took that away um i never heard of tumblr again after that like that was it but i feel like Um, the same thing's gonna happen to OnlyFans. well okay anyways bringing this back to tv Amy, I'm so happy that you watched Selling Sunset because that show is so addictive. I binged it I all cannot. weekend. I know. I I can I keep Googling when the next season is going to come out. And I don't I'm so excited. If, if I'm not sure if it got like pushed back or what, but I really, really cannot wait for the new season. But you finished it, right? Yeah, I finished all of it. So this past weekend actually, um I wasn't feeling great. So I stayed home all weekend. Um just a quarantine just to be safe and I watched the entire thing I started it like Thursday night actually I couldn't sleep Thursday so I stayed up till like 4 a.m watching it like the first eight or nine episodes and then over the weekend I finished all three up all three seasons I'm obsessed I feel so bad for Chrishell I mean honestly yeah I don't know what happened there but she said she didn't see it coming but me either I don't know I feel like when it comes to a relationship the only two people who really know what happened are the two people involved right well this is us ended right I don't know I uh I'm really behind I started watching the COVID season that came out this year and I think I got like three or four episodes in and then I just forgot about it. But I'm probably, that's kind know. of what I do with This Is Us So I, I stop watching it for a while and then I go back to it. It's one of those shows, it gets a little redundant, but two shows that do not get redundant that have new episodes right now on Netflix that I'm obsessed with, Atypical and Grace and Frankie. Danielle, my I know sister, I told you. My sister you likes Atypical. Grace and Frankie a lot, but. Grace and Frankie is everything. I want to be Frankie. So they just released, like, after two years or a year or whatever, they just released their new season. Obviously, COVID kind of disrupted it, but they only released four episodes when their past season had, like, 13 or something. So I was looking into it, and apparently they're going to release the rest of the episodes next year. So I don't know how I felt about that. Yeah, I don't know how I felt about that. Yeah, so you can only watch four episodes right now of the final season. I feel like that was kind of... I've already watched all four. Same, now you're going to have to wait. I thought they were doing it because a lot of shows now, and it's driving me nuts, they're trying to, well, okay, not a lot of shows. It's a Netflix thing, I reckon. Netflix is trying to get more on the Hulu 
page. And I guess it's probably the bigger companies like the actual TV networks and their contract with these streaming um, platforms. But like with Hulu for like live TV, if you don't have the live TV add on, which is like $50 a month, if you just have like the $15 plan, which is what most people have, then you can watch new episodes of stuff, but you can't watch it until the next day after it has aired on regular TV. No, it's only five. It's five dollars. No, it's not five dollars for live TV. No, you said you said it's fifteen dollars if you don't have live TV. Oh well, I have a bundle with Disney. Sorry. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so I was like, Amy, it's only five dollars. Anyway, so now Netflix, it seems that they're having a couple of different shows where they're only releasing like three episodes at a time. And I don't know why they're doing that. And it's driving me nuts. But also, would you rather have three episodes now, wait a couple weeks and get three more episodes, etc., or wait like a whole six to eight months and then get all of it at once? Binge or no binge? I'd rather have it all at once because I feel like you can then just look forward to the next season because see netflix did that already you know they used to only do that so i don't know but anyway what is a kim of queens okay so i just i I thought that was gonna be i thought that was gonna say king of queens like the old tv show no but i'll tell you something about that show later anyways but there are two shows you said that you keep checking to see when they're going to release new episodes i have two shows that i got obsessed with during the initial covid like year. So 2020, I got obsessed with Thousand Pound Sisters with Tammy and Amy. Um, I think it was two seasons. They Can are they hilarious. Move? What? Can they even move? Can they move? Yeah. Well, one of them already had the surgery, the weight loss surgery. So she's smaller now. She actually just had a baby. And the other one, she's still working on getting her surgery. She hasn't made the weight yet. So we don't know. We worry What's about her. the weight you have to make. Um, I think I don't, I don't remember really. I haven't watched it in a couple months because they haven't had new episodes. But I think that she needs to get down to like under 650 maybe. Oh, wow. Something like that. Or maybe but like I, okay, 600. So, so I have a question though. Yeah. How do you lose weight if you're like a thousand pounds? You literally just move a little bit. Like literally and standing up and then sitting back down or just like moving your arms a little bit. Each day, you'll lose just a couple pounds just by doing that. And then eventually, you go to, like, standing up and then sitting back down more often. And then you go to, like, moving. Yeah, it's just, like, small, small movements. But anyways, that one I'm obsessed with. And then Kim of Queens is basically, like, Dance Moms, but also better. Um, And I just need her to come back in my life. I never watched Dance Moms. (laughs) Fall TV? No, me either. But Kim of Queens is better, though. But Fall TV is coming back. And I'm really excited for Station 19, for Grey's, SVU. I'm just, I love my TV, and the fall is the best time for TV. So these girls can have their pumpkin spice lattes, and I'll have my fall TV. Thank you. It is time to slay that Q&A, where we ask questions in a rapid-fire style. So, ladies, what trend did you hop on at one point in your life that you most we're embarrassed by now um there was a little period of time when i was in like eighth grade where all the kids that i was hanging out with were like scene kids which scene kids are like basically emo kids but with like (laughs) more adrenaline more adhd and like bright colors so it's like black stuff but with neon um and screamo music oh and teased hair lots of eyeliner and mascara i tried that For like a solid couple weeks. No, probably longer. Um, It was not the look for me. I didn't really fully commit to it. I realized a weekend that I was not into that kind of music. And then I was like, do I keep faking it? Or do I just say nah? So since I had already convinced my dad to buy me all new school clothes from Hot Topic. That's what I was stuck with for the year. So I just stuck with the outfits. But I... I just didn't really... I didn't really go in that deep. I just kind of smiled and nodded. So I feel like... For me, it was basically at any point in middle school and early high school because I was going to say in any time during that, everything was a mistake. Yeah, exactly. Everything, everything, like even the even somebody who I had a crush on back then, like, no, no, that would never happen now. You know, like just no, there's just so many things that you do or wear in your process of growing up. And it's it's interesting. 
Amy has me dying over here, though. So, Alex, is your answer the same as mine, then? Absolutely. I didn't have an emo phase. I just had a super bitch phase. So, I'm glad I got with that. You a sporty, sporty phase? Yeah, because I always played sports. From exactly. Like, so, there you go. Because I was like, I don't know, five. <laughs> that was like a 10 year phase. All right. What should be trending, ladies? That, that is so easy. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried body scrub. I haven't until one random time I'm at Target because when you go to Target, you feel like you have to buy the whole friggin' store. <laughs> <laughs> Raw sugar, body scrub, the watermelon scent will change your life. It smells so good. No, I don't think you're supposed to put it on your lips, Amy. No, they make a sugar lip balm. Yeah. Oh, the sh- raw lip sugar? scrub. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the, oh my gosh, I put some on my legs today. Whew, smells delicious. Alex, you go because I have to look up the name of this hand soap. Um, it's the first thing that I thought of. My friend has this hand soap that she told me she was obsessed with. And I was like, eh, whatever, it's hand soap. But lordy lord, if I didn't go pee a couple times extra at her house just to use the hand soap. So I need to order some. So you, pro- you probably need some too. So Alex, what uh, what do you think should be trending? I'm like the wrong person to ask because I never know what's going on in the world. Um, I'd say acupuncture. I'm getting back on that acupuncture acupuncture trend. So definitely recommend it to everyone out there. How is that though? Because I want to do it like theoretically, but like, oh, am, like, should I be scared? Why would you be scared? Does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. You barely feel it. The needle is, like, basically the size of, like, one single hair. It's tinier than, like, a needle that you get a shot with, so you really don't feel it. Isn't it, like, supposed to hit your pressure points to relax you or something? It what hits, it like, chi points to help uh, balance your energy along. According to Chinese medicine, like, there you have energy channels and lines in your body, and they become blocked and dysfunctional, and when you... I'm not an expert on this. I just go. I'm, I'm not uh-huh. an acupuncturist. Um, and when you go, putting needles in these points helps basically rebalance the chi or the energy. That's kind of the short story. My chi's all jacked up. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Amy, did you figure out the name of your uh, soap? I really didn't. I thought I had a photograph of it. And nope. So I have two different things instead. Half as good. So one of them, which we'll have to post when we release the episode, is a picture. It has a little skeleton bent over. It's a Halloween skeleton. And it says, there's some horrors in this house. And I'm obsessed. The skeleton is twerking. You mean horrors? Horrors. Yeah, I said that. I just... (laughs) You did not say that right. pronunciation didn't. Horrors. I'm not good at horrors. How do you say it? <laughs> Amy, it sounds like you're just saying something else. Danielle, you say it? Horrors. Alex? Whores? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like them. Oh my god. So, whatever. Horror? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, what's horror. your other thing? Okay, so the other thing that I'm obsessed with, and it should be trending, it probably is, I feel like, a long time ago, and I'm just very late to the game. But... I've been trying to get a tan my entire life, and it's never really worked out. I've tried the tanning beds, never worked out. I moved to Florida. I guess I just don't go down the sun enough, but it hasn't worked out. So I think I'm going to give in and try, um, like, a foam tanner. Like, not a spray tan, but basically a spray tan. But apparently there's this Jurgens one, like the Natural Glow, and I've seen people that use it, and it looks really good. So I'm hoping that it's going to work on my pale person we'll find out but if anything i'm in quarantine so it's fine but i'm obsessed with getting outside of my comfort zone danielle all right so last but not least this is something that was trending on twitter um basically you guys have seen all of those picture collages they've been making through covid over the last year and a half or so on all the socials that's like you have to pick one or you have to pick three or what have you and they have like different food items or different movies or different celebs or what have you so this one is like different movies or sorry different tv shows you can only save three shows not one 
you can save three shows. The rest are deleted from history entirely. So not just from you. No one else will ever see them ever in the world again. I've only seen one of these. So we'll post the we'll post this up on Instagram, obviously. I already gave a little teaser on Twitter, but <clears throat> and we could do a poll. But it's the Sopranos, The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, The Wire, Empire, Ozark, Prison Break, Sons of Anarchy, and Breaking Bad. For me, it's an easy three. Sons of Anarchy, Empire, and Game of Thrones. Well, I've only seen Game of Thrones, so I'm going to go Game of Thrones. My parents watched The Sopranos and really liked it, so I'll go with The Sopranos. And I can't get past the first episode for some reason, but I would like to watch the rest of it to figure out why everybody is obsessed with it. So Breaking Bad is my last one. It's not as good as Weeds. Just saying. It's better than Weeds. Weeds definitely jumped the shark tank. (laughs) All right, Alex, what are yours? What are yours? Honestly, the only thing I care about on this list is Game of Thrones. The rest can be deleted. Wow. From all of history? Yeah, do it. Do it, man. No, Sons of Anarchy? Never seen it. Don't care. Alex, Alex, have you seen all of Game of Thrones? Yeah, man. Did you start watching that? In college. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah, Who's man. Your I favorite hard. Favorite? I hard. Like, I like Arya. Wait. wait yeah, Alex. Arya's cool. Did you start what? watching that because of Britney? No. Do you remember? No. No, I started watching it my third year. So it would have oh, been okay. after Britney. Dude, I was Amy, so bad. Not everything revolves no. around your girlfriends. <laughs> I was just say actually it does. <laughs> They should all know that to all my For exes you. out there at that time. At one point or another, it all revolved around you, baby. Um, anyways. <laughs> um, Until now when you no longer are with any of them. I said at one point or another. Anyways, though, um, I was so salty because <laughs> I've never been, like, on trends early. Obviously, I just realized, I just discovered Selling Sunset. But the girl that I dated my freshman year of college got me into Game of Thrones. She had the first season on DVD. And had me watching them with her. And it was always late at night. And I was so tired. And they're obviously long like. episodes. It's like watching a movie. Yeah. They're long episodes. So like. It took me a while to get into it. And then she only had the first season. So after that I kind of forgot about it. And then a few years later everybody's like all hyped about Game of Thrones. And I'm like wait a minute. This sounds familiar. And then I was just behind. And I'm like wow. If I would have just stuck with what she was trying to show me. I would have discovered this greatness earlier in life. I had to binge watch all the seasons and then a year and and then I moved and they still hadn't come out with the last season for another two years. And then by the time it came out, I was like, I don't really remember what happened, but I know it was good. (laughs) The the only other one on this list that I highly recommend is Sons of Anarchy. I know we got to hurry up. This is a long episode, but you've got to watch Sons of Anarchy if you haven't seen it. If you've ever seen the show Married with Children and you know Peg, Peggy Bundy. With the big red hair. She is in this show and she is a savage. She's in that new show Rebel too. But she's a savage in this show. It's amazing. Gotta watch it. And the main guy's super cute. As always, we want to leave you with some words to live by. This week we were talking about trends. So don't follow trends. Start them. Join us for new episodes every other week. They'll be coming out Monday, so you can start the week off right as we unravel another chapter of Project Grown Up. If you know anyone who'd be a good interview for the PG Inspiring Stories, send us an email at projgrownup at gmail.com. And always be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast and leave us a five-star review. Hopefully you found some keys to success in this episode. Cheers to another week of trying to be a grown-up. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. Damn, I knew that was going to happen. One more time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.